TryHackMeAn just released a new certification that covers web, network, and Active Directory all in one junior pen testing exam. It's called PT1 and it's got a lot of people wondering, is it a game changer or is it just another entry level cert? In this video, I'll break it down where the PT1 fits in and how it compares against EJPT, PJPT, and PWPA and whether or not this is the best choice for your first hacking certification or a distraction from the ones that actually matter. For the ones who only want a quick summary, here's what you need to know. PT1 is the only junior certification that combines web, network, and Active Directory penetration testing in one exam, and it's tightly integrated with the TriAcme platform. However, it lacks video training, proctoring, and may spread itself too thin when compared against more focused alternatives. In my opinion, it seems like a pretty good first certification to get if you haven't already committed to another junior option. If you've already gone deep on another junior pen testing certification, then my advice would be to skip it and move on to mid-level certifications that actually move the needle. If you've already committed to getting PT1 and you started down the learning paths and you are struggling to complete rooms without watching or reading walkthroughs, then my advice would be to take a step back and go after more foundational certifications such as the Comte Network Plus or the Comte Security Plus and then come back to the PT1 later. Despite TriHackMe's marketing, PT1 probably will not get you hired. However, it can build confidence, sharpen your skills, and prepare you for higher level certifications that employers are actually looking for. Use PT1 as a launch pad and not a destination. Whether you are pivoting from blue team or just starting out, it will help you build momentum, but you need to keep going after you obtain it. If you are a text-based learner and you're early in your journey, PT1 might very well be the best junior pen testing certification for you, especially if you already use TriHackMe. However, you need to be aware of its trade-offs and limitations. If that high level summary was all you needed, feel free to click off the video now. But before you go, if you got any value out of this video whatsoever, do me a small favor and like this video and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. Now, for those who are sticking around for the full breakdown and want to become future elites in this field, let me quickly introduce myself for those who are new to the channel. My name is Kaiser Clark. I have been in the cybersecurity field for over seven years now, and I currently work as a full-time penetration tester, also known as an ethical hacker. This stuff isn't theory. This is what I do in the real world every single day, and I'm here to help you grow your hacking and cybersecurity knowledge. Allow me to throw out a few disclaimers before we get started. One, this video is not sponsored by TriHackMe, and I have yet to accept a sponsorship from any certification provider. I simply make these videos to help you make informed decisions about your cybersecurity career. Two, I did not and probably will not take the PT1 certification exam. The reason for this is because as a mid-level penetration tester, it doesn't make sense for my career to take a step backwards and get yet another junior level certification. My time is better spent moving the needle forward, going after more mid and advanced level certifications. And that's actually a point that I make later in the video, so stay tuned for that. Let's talk about how PT1 stacks up against the competition. And I'm not just giving you service level takes here, I'm breaking this down so you can see exactly where PT1 shines, where it's just okay, and where it might not make sense for you. So let's do a quick reality check on TriHackMe's comparison chart. TriHackMe's own graphic makes some odd choices. They compare PT1 to Pentest Plus and CEH, which are theoretical and not practical. PT1 is hands-on, so it's not even in the same weight class. And that's not me dogging on Pentest Plus and CEH. I actually have both of those certifications. I'm just keeping it real. This is the facts. And one thing that is pretty misleading on this chart is that they list the Pentest Plus at $1,319, which is only true if you buy the full bundle. Most people pay closer to about $500 using third-party training, which is what I've done for all seven of my CompTIA certifications, so I know it works. They also include TCM Security's PWPT, but that is a professional level web application certification, so in my opinion, it shouldn't be here. A more fair comparison would be against TCM Security's PWPA, which is designed for the associate level, and PWPA used to be considered a junior level certification. Now let's talk about the strengths of PT1. For starters, it is the only junior pen testing certification that covers network, web, and Active Directory. So it is a well-rounded start. 
If you're serious about breaking into this field, then daily try hack me is something that you should already have into your routine and PT one gives you a way to certify that effort without jumping to another platform. Furthermore, PT one, if you decide to go for it is going to force you to pay attention to the try hack me rooms more than you would have otherwise. That integration could speed up your progress, especially if you are looking to maintain momentum and avoid platform fatigue. But there is a trade-off. If PT1 and TryHackMe is your only training, you might only see the concepts one time. Personally, I have always used multiple platforms when I was learning, and layering multiple platforms together helped the skills stick long-term. The convenience is real, but over-reliance on one source can potentially hold you back later. Getting into the weaknesses of PT1, the first thing that comes to my mind is the fact that the exam is not proctored which potentially opens up the door for cheating and credibility issues down the road. Now, it's not a total weakness because PT1's competitors, EJPT, PJPT, and PWPA also do not have proctored exams. And in a way, that is a strength because that's one of the reasons why they can keep the costs down. But overall, in my opinion, it's a net negative especially when you compare these certifications against the current gold standard, which is OFSEC at the time of this recording, which does have proctored exams and has very little to no credibility issues. The next weakness I want to mention here is the fact that there is no video training, which is a huge loss for visual learners. PJPT, EJPT, and PWPA all come with solid video instruction, PT1, does not. And lastly, PT1 may be doing too much. It's trying to cram Active Directory, network testing, web app testing, all in one certification exam. It feels more like a jack of all trades, master of none to me, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Just know what you're getting into. Next up, AI grading. Is it a pro or is it a con? So here's the good. Instant results. You don't have to wait for days after a 40 hour exam to get your results, which absolutely helps people with high anxiety or people who overthink and worry too much. The bad news is that AI misses context. Cybersecurity lives in the gray and AI doesn't always catch nuance. And yes, it makes mistakes. I use AI all the time, but if I trust that blindly, then I wouldn't be putting out high quality work that I am proud of. AI is a tool, not a replacement for expert review. Should this even concern you? Well, maybe a little bit because I have a gut feeling that there will be people who end up passing PT1 who didn't deserve a passing score and vice versa. People might end up failing PT1 who didn't deserve a failure because the AI incorrectly graded their report. And I don't think it is a game breaker by any means, but it's definitely a small detail worth considering and looking into and talking about. Compare that to TCM security and OSSEC who use real humans to grade your report after your exam. TCM security turnaround time is roughly 24 hours in my experience and for OSSEC it's anywhere between 48 to 72 hours which isn't too bad in my opinion and you get the reassurance that a real human saw your work. Now you might be wondering if you're brand new should this be your first certification? PT1 can seem like a great all-in-one introduction for new hackers, but it can also be too much if you're not ready. If you're constantly stuck in try hacking rooms and relying heavily on walkthroughs or hints, you might need to slow down and build more foundational skills first. I typically like to recommend the CompTIA Network Plus and the CompTIA Security Plus for first timers. The good news is you can start the Try Hack Me PT1 learning for absolutely free. And if you are making good progress and you are enjoying it, then by all means, go get the certification. But if it's overwhelming, that's okay too. Just prep more and don't force it. The bottom line is this. PT1 seems like a good first pen testing certification to get into, but only if you're ready for it. Despite Junior being in its name, I would expect it to be very challenging. Now let's talk about where this cert actually gets you. Let's be real, PT1 isn't going to get you hired and that's okay. Unfortunately, with the current job market, employers are not hiring junior pen testers. They are only hiring mid and senior level pen testers. The good news is that it's not impossible to break in. You have to 
brand yourself as a mid-level penetration tester. Even if you've never worked a day in pen testing in your life, you still need to market yourself as a mid-level pen tester. Now that doesn't mean inflate your skills and lie in your resume. That means go out and actually get the skills and get the credentials to market yourself as a mid-level penetration tester. The days of learning on the job are over and that doesn't just go for cybersecurity, but that goes for the entire job market for all industries. You are expected to go into your job with the skills, confidence, and knowledge to get the job done with minimal to no supervision. And oftentimes you are expected to know more than your manager for that role. So in my humble opinion, PT1 will not get you there, but it can get you started. And because of that, you should be using PT1 as a launch pad and not a destination. It can absolutely help you build up your confidence, get reps, and prep for other certifications and skills that actually move the needle. Now, if you're pivoting from Blue Team to Pentester within the same company, PT1 might actually do the trick because your company already knows you do great work. But if you're trying to get hired from the outside or want to be a freelancer, you're probably going to want a mid-level pen testing cert. Most employers and clients don't want to see a junior cert as your top credential. On the other hand, if you're looking to become a bug bounty hunter, then I will point you in the direction of the TCM Security PWPA. The PWPA is a web app focused pen testing certification and that course name is actually Practical Bug Bounty. And when it comes to bug bounty, you really don't need to have the ins and outs of network pen testing and Active Directory. In reality, PT1 is not a resume booster. It is a momentum builder. In my opinion, junior pen testing certifications are best used as stepping stones to higher level certifications that actually show up on job postings. Final verdict, should you take PT1? If you're early in your journey, and you still haven't picked up a junior pen testing certification, PT1 is a solid choice. Here's what it does right. For starters, it gives you the opportunity to prove that you actually paid attention during your try hacking training. Next, we have price, which is fair, especially if you already have a try hacking premium subscription. Last but not least, like I said earlier, PT1 covers more ground than other junior pen testing certifications. It's the only junior pen testing certification that covers the three main categories being web, network, and active directory. So what needs improved? So the whole, the cert that gets you hired marketing is misleading in my opinion. Furthermore, there's no video training, which is a major miss for visual learners like myself. And then last but not least, there's no proctoring or exam integrity controls. So who should take PT1. Starting off, we have people who already have a junior pen testing certification. If you fall in that category, then pass on this. If you are a blue teamer looking to build offensive security skills, then the PT1 is a solid option, though it's not your only option. If you prefer video training, then I would say PJPT, PWPA, or EJPT is a better option for you. If you want to specialize in network penetration testing, I would Pass on PT1 and go TCM Security PJPT. If you want to specialize in web app testing, again, I would pass on PT1 and go after the TCM Security PWPA. And last but not least, if you want to be a pen testing generalist like me, aka someone who could do network or web app testing, then the PT1 might be your best option. Just know that if you choose a generalist route, you will, in my experience, move to the advanced certifications a little bit slower than you would otherwise. However, it will open up more doors for you for more types of pen testing work. Now I want you to imagine a make-believe fantasy land where all my certs, all my skills, and all my knowledge was magically stripped away from me. The question then becomes, would I get PT1 if I was starting over today from scratch? And the answer to that question for me is a no. And the reason why it's a no is because I know how I learn best and the lack of video training is a deal breaker for me. Try Hack Me was always a way to introduce myself to a concept, and I didn't fully grasp every single topic during my Try Hack Me studies, and I didn't really cement the knowledge in my brain until I started going after video courses such as the EJPT and the OSCP. Now, at the time I got EJPT, the TCM Security PJPT did not exist. I do like the TCM Security PJPT more than EJPT, 
on the simple fact that the PJPT lasts forever, doesn't expire, and the EJPT does expire. And the fact that it does expire honestly annoys me because now I have to deal with that. I, I might not even get it renewed. That said, don't let my preferences dissuade you from getting the PT1. And if this looks exciting to you, enticing to you, then by all means, go get PT1, especially if you don't mind the lack of video content or if you prefer text-based content, and especially if you wanna tie in your trihackney studies with a certification. Here is my final advice. Pick one junior certification and then move up. What you don't wanna do is get three or four junior certifications and never make your way to that mid-level. Because like I said earlier, that mid-level is really what employers and clients are looking for. And if you're wondering what I would consider the mid-level certifications are, I would say you want to go after on the network side, OSCP, PMPT, or the CPTS. And on the web app side, go after OSWA, CBBH, and PWPT. Now, you only need one of these to start applying for mid-level pet testing jobs but it is okay to get multiple mid-level certifications. That's actually part of my strategy currently, but really you only need one to get started. And then once you get your first pen testing job, it doesn't hurt to grab two or three more mid-level certifications if that's what you wanna do before you move up to advance. You could just get one mid-level certification and go advance after that. It's really up to you. But for me, I really need to spend a lot of time in the mid-level before I go to the advanced level, but for you, it might be different. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the PT1. Are you gonna go after it, or do you think PT1 is a complete miss? If you made it this far in this video and you are still on the fence and trying to figure out if the PT1 is right for you, or maybe you just wanna compare to the other junior pen dusting options, you are in luck because I have full-length videos for both the EJPT and the PWPA. And if you have already committed to getting PT1, then I would highly recommend watching my TriHackMe SAO1 complete guide. It is a different certification, but it is a TriHackMe certification nonetheless. And in that video, I explain why I failed the first time and what I did differently to pass the second time. And those exam tips I'm confident are going to carry over for your journey into PT1. Click watch now and I'll see you there.